Potter's shit show even harder to process is that she didn't just ruin a book series. Harry Potter was an entire subculture. Like Star Wars and Star Trek fans, Harry Potter fans dedicated their lives and careers to the series. I don't know if I'd call it underground, for liking Harry Potter got you beaten up when I was in school, so it was more of a dedicated indie culture than a mass appeal fan base. Harry Potter was so huge that fan works developed their own followings. Potter Puppet Pals racked up hundreds of thousands of followers and was nearly as relevant as the series itself. For fan fiction, Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality got so big that it has a Wikipedia page. The band Harry and the Potters spawned the wizard rock music genre. A very Potter musical developed a fan base and launched Darren Chris's career. Harry Potter also has extensive ties to fandom history. Everyone in my generation, millennials, remembers coming home from school to read Harry Potter fan fiction on the internet. Today, most people just post their stories on Wattpad or Archive of Our Own, but at the time, the fan base was splintered between fan fiction, net and dozens of individual websites and forums, some made for specific ships. Since they all had individual hosts, a lot of those sites have been lost to time. And there's the infamous My Immortal Fan Fiction, which is an internet legend with people still searching for the author. Everybody read that one, and laughed at it, in middle school. Pre-social media, fan sites like The Leaky Cauldron and MuggleNet had massive followings because they were one of few sources for news, theories, essays, and fan content. Some of these sites still exist after being around for over a decade and building their own legacy. Before Deathly Hallows came out, fans were so desperate to know what happened that MuggleNet published a book called What Will Happen in Harry Potter 7? Who Lives? Who Dies? Who Falls in Love and How Will the Adventure Finally End? Yep, Harry Potter was so big that people wrote separate books about what would happen in an upcoming book. And that's not mentioning all the book release parties, Harry Potter-themed events, monuments, fan films, restaurants, and even a theme park. A lot of fandoms have those, but Harry Potter infiltrated every aspect of popular culture. Today, there's a thriving culture of Harry Potter adults with themed weddings, baby showers, and Etsy stores. Putting your Hogwarts house in your Instagram bio is pretty much a prerequisite for joining the bookish community. Warner still produces new content like the Fantastic Beasts series, although we've all seen what a disaster that's been. Everyone has at least a few memories associated with Harry Potter, even if it's just watching the movies. I had great memories associated with Harry Potter. But looking back at the subculture, history, and thousands of fan works, it doesn't seem fun anymore. Studying the fandom or being part of it comes with an awkward tension because you don't want to seem like you're condoning JKR's bigotry but can't divorce her from the series. This subculture was spawned by a woman who turned her legacy of magic and wonder into one of abuse and hatred. I don't expect people to write paragraphs about how much they hate JKR every time they post about Harry Potter, but it's still uncomfortable to see people make new content or wear their Harry Potter Etsy tote bags like nothing happened. Even if they clarify that they don't support her, it's just a weird tense situation for everybody. People dedicated years of their lives to running Harry Potter fan sites, writing fan fiction, cosplaying characters, and making fan movies. If I were in that situation, I'd have a mild identity crisis. I'd ask myself, did I waste all those years? Should I delete my content? Where do I go from here? So ultimately, JKR didn't ruin just a book series or even just a fandom. She tanked an entire culture, which inspired people to look at Harry Potter more critically. The issues that people brought to the light tainted the series' legacy, even without JKR's personal issues. Once, Harry Potter was a series for generations. Now former fans hope that the series fades into irrelevancy. Unfortunately, JKR didn't just tarnish her legacy. She took decades of history, millions of fans, and a worldwide subculture along with her. So everything that was uh, stated here is big facts. And ultimately, like, this is coming from somewhere where I myself, a colossal, Harry Potter fan and you know as much as I absolutely would love to you know wax jokingly about black mold see here being the reason why JK Rowling is losing her goddamn mind ultimately at the end of the day like she is a she's a Blairite she is the equivalent 
of a Bill Clinton or a Nancy Pelosi. You know, she very much thinks that the world ended, like like history ended in 2005. And J.K. Rowling gets unprecedented support, you know, for a myriad of different reasons. Because, you see, the U.K. doesn't really have that many, you know, big cultural exports in the year of our Lord 2024. The United Kingdom is a diminished, you know, superpower. Like, it, it, like it doesn't have the cultural soft power that a place like the United States might have or a place like Japan might have in terms of its cultural exports. I mean, it has some notable ones. You have, you know, your James Bond, which of which there hasn't been a significant entry, you know, in almost a decade. Um, you have Top Gear, um, which after Richard, uh, Richard Hammond, James May, and Jeremy Clarkson left to were poached by the American company Amazon and started their own exactly the same show, basically um ostensibly you know isn't as popular because of those personalities you have doctor who which after one two doctors ha uh, had just quintessentially apathetic writers that despite very interesting doctors in the form of you know capaldi and foster um are just now starting to write the ship and 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 making up for almost a decade of you know lost capital in in regards of like writers that did not care about the IP the characters or the writing really like had a very contentious relate to it and of course Harry Potter which is a, a cultural bedrock that was that ended up cracking the found that had its foundation cracking under the weight of again uh, Joanne's, you know, transphobic ramblings, which don't get me wrong. Like, this is, I'm obviously a lefty and I continue to parrot, you know, left wing politics, but this is ostensibly a gaming and nerd channel. I'll, I will, keep, I'll keep the transphobia and all that stuff as, as much as she is to the side momentarily. I will get into it later in this video, but ostensibly, you know, her behavior online is, you know, because due to other cultural exports not being as relevant, uh, the, you know, people in power, the Tories, namely, who who just ended their, you know, 14 year stint of power running their country into the ground for 14 years straight, uh, are now dealing with uh, like have supported her in her innate in, like insane ramblings. Uh, because of her control over one of the UK's last large cultural exports. The UK doesn't really have, you know, a meaningful identity now in the modern age, at least. And, 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 and you can say that, oh, we do. I'm an American. When I think of the UK, I think about bad cuisine. I think about, uh, you know, y'all yelling slurs at football games. And I think about Harry Potter. Like, those are the three first three things that come to mind, you know, as an American, not including the Revolutionary War. Like, that's what I think about. You know, that, like, if I were to think further, I think about you guys have national health care. Uh, you guys are currently fucked because of Brexit. But I'm more worldly and educated than, mo than most of my countrymen. For example... Wizarding blood supremacist, whose own blood composition doesn't even hold up to the, the scrutiny of his own ideology, gets his puppet to take over control of the government of wizards, a government that does, in fact, despite admonishing the, tre the, the, the ideology of said leader of blood supremacist movement but during his previous reign in war, before, during, and after, all already... Uh, promoted the supremacy of wizards over, over other magical folk like centaurs and goblins. And the chosen one, i.e. this fetus pictured here, uh, ends up defeating said far-right authoritarian blood supremacist 
you know, ideological leader. And then instead of a fundamental change on how the government is run and, you know, the ideologies that and, and beliefs within the wizarding culture that, you know, permeated the like, like, the, like permissed uh, this type of ideology and a government structure that allowed one guy's pu one one guy's puppet to take control of the government and give it over to the other guy de facto instead decides we are going to go back to said status quo and then said chose this chosen one after all of this after seven plus years of being you know fighting against and also suffering under the ramifications of said blood supremacist ideology decides to be the wizarding equivalent of a cop specifically like swat or something did you all know that goblins are caricatures of jewish people allegories prior history something something weimar something something world war ii i digress ultimately J.K. Rowling and the Harry Potter series is an enigma to me because there are plenty of other things that in it that sort of, you know, as someone who has been radicalized and as someone who was emotionally, you know, found it important through reading the text now as a grown adult, as well as, you know, more understanding, you know, now that I'm older, you kind of realize a couple things. Let's talk about the literary devices that J.K. Rowling uses in Harry Potter. And she uses this in other books as well. One of the literary aspects of J.K. Rowling that you read that you kind of figure out upon rereads is the way she uses size, specifically uh, women's size a, a lot of the time, as moral failings. Let's start with, you know, a male example of this, Horace Slughorn, or let's actually, this is the movie, ver the movie depiction is actually not in compliance with what J.K. Rowling talks about. She comments in his book on Slughorn's body a lot, and the cover art from the chapter on which we are introduced to Slughorn is significantly more representative of the verbiage she uses. She calls him rotund and bulging and huge. And we're, we need to remember what kind of character Horace Slughorn is, such was. He is a vapid character, very interested in, you know, uh, pride and, 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 and status and control. He is very much, you know, a more weak-willed uh, character, you know, to the point where Dumbledore had to basically drag his ass to Hogwarts. Another example of this is the titular Umbridge. I'm sorry. This. This is a more apt description of Dolores Umbridge. Depiction, I mean to say. The movie, like, Hollywood, a notoriously, let's be honest, fat-phobic industry, even thought this was too much of a depiction for a, a, this character. J.K. Rowling has a habit of attributing... Uh, peep how good or bad a character is to their size a lot of the time. Now this also kind of now this also can go now this is particularly ab abrupt with women, you know, see her descriptions of Professor Twully, the, the divination teacher. And even characters that are well liked, like Molly Weasley, for example, are you know, Canonically, like, are, you know, bigger women, which is fine, but you can see that when Molly is behaving in a way that is, we're supposed to view as objectionable, J.K. Rowling will describe her body in very, in, in, in very negative ways. This is a habit that, you know, is reflected in a lot of her mystery books where, you know, they describe where she describes women in much like in, in significantly worse terms, you know, compared to the Harry Potter books. Like it's, she's very much, is not fighting that impulse anymore. I kind of want to bring it back to goblins for a second. Um, I want to read this quote by Bill Weasley. We are talking about a different breed of being. 
breed is wild here. Dealings between wizards and goblins have been fraught for centuries. There has been fault on both sides. I would never claim that wizards have been innocent. However, there is a belief among some goblins, and those at Gringotts are probably, or perhaps most prone to it, a reminder that goblins are caricatures of Jewish people, and the only wizarding bank is run by goblins. That wizards cannot be trusted in matters of gold and treasure. That they have no respect for goblin ownership. J.K. Rowling is on record for not stating outright that gob that goblins are, you know, an allegory for Jewish people. Blah 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 blah. the The pragmatic matter of it is is that when you actually consider the history of goblins. In J.K. Rowling's own words, within the, the history of the wizarding world, goblins have constantly had rebellions put down by wizards. They are very, very much, you know, and, and they, like, they are under the Department for Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures. Goblins were considered to be inferior by many wizards who foolishly believed that goblins were comfortable with that arrangement. Remember, the, the Ministry of Magic is its is on its own merits. It's a a has the idea of wizard supremacy being paramount. The only thing keeping wizards from trying to take over the world or something like that, which Voldemort wanted ultimately to do, was the fact that every single time in human history that wizards had tried to exercise dominion over the non over non wizards like humans they got rebuked entirely the you know wizards went into hiding during king arthur's time in in the in in in, in well not in king arthur's time but technically kind of because because it's all kind of like ambiguous um they went to into hiding during the medieval period because ultimately they were you know, they were rebuked because there are a thousand non-wizarding humans to every one wizard. Now, don't get me wrong. Like a single wizard can take care of dozens of, of humans in one fucking go. But not a, but not like what, you know, armies would field. And, you know, in today's day and age, if they were to, if Voldemort was successful and did end up taking things over, it wouldn't end well. It wouldn't result in a world where, you know, wizards are on top. They would have to do it through subterfuge. And even then, in an environment where you have places like the United States and the UK, where there are rope, where, you know, are the democracies involved, like the running of the democracy involves many hands. And it is very much a bottom up, you know, structure in terms of like getting people into power it would not be an easy task for wizards to just do that. So, you know, ultimately that, you know, D Voldemort was going to be doomed to fail, but if he was successful, at least in co-opting the wizarding world, what would eventually happen is the, what would ultimately happen is the death of like wizards, at least in Europe, like, you know, they, they wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't like muggles once, you know, it was apparent what was going on wasn't going to fix like it wasn't gonna you know fix shit you know what i mean so you know and also like people like all like anyone who was like like a family or hermit or whatever that were like seen but like never you know a, like dressed like if you had a neighbor or something that like lived in the house next to you but you never saw them or heard of them like you would light their shit on fire if you found out that like there was a secret society of people living amongst you with magic powers that want to control you you know, like that's what would happen because also British people are unfucking hinged. Lastly, at the end, lastly, and this will be the last point I kind of want to make, and to bring it back into the real world just briefly, you know, I want to round out what the video said uh, at the top of this, the first four minutes. The Harry Potter series is, was, and continues to influence millions of people around the world. There are plenty of people who could not care less about J.K. Rowling's, you know, behavior and her support of, you know, political prescriptions that at 
you think by reading her book she would be, you know, against. Ultimately, um, it, it it hurts my inner child that J.K. Rowling sucks now, and I, you know, I like the book. Like the books are fine, the movies are fine. I'll watch them or whatever. Like I'm probably, you know, will someday get around to playing a bit of Hogwarts Legacy, but like. You can't unring that bell. You can't, you know, you end up seeing all of the problems with this IP. And, you know, it's a lot harder to hand wave them away when the person who created it is saying, this is how this is, this is how that is, and this is why this is like the way it is. And those and her reasonings are, you know bully behavior it's deeply unfortunate and it makes me sad but that's all thank y'all for watching i'll catch y'all later have a good one hey thanks for watching if you want to you want to talk to me outside of this video outside of live streams or just be a join the community and be a part of it you can do so at hibmedia.gg slash discord discord links there we'd love to have you and Given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ask, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at himedia.gg slash tip. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boon to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have great day.